Hi. Hi. I'm Dave. And I'm Nicola. Welcome to our video on synaptic transmission. Please turn off all mobile phones and enjoy the show. Please note we do not accept liability for injuries resulting from uncontrollable laughter. This is a motor neuron. Its purpose is to transfer the impulse from a relay or interconnecting neuron within the central nervous system to the muscle or effector. The nucleus contains the genetic instructions of the cell. The dendrites are projecting finger-like branches that pick up the nerve impulse from the adjacent neuron. The larger the dendrite, the larger the surface area, so more of the impulse can be picked up. The axon is a long, thin, cylindrical-like tube through which the nerve impulse passes. It is protected by a fatty, insulating layer called myelin sheath. Myelin sheath protects the axon and helps to speed up the nerve impulse. The nerve impulse is also sped up by the nodes of Ranvier, small nodules located on the axon that allow the impulse to jump from node to node. After travelling down the axon, the impulse arrives at the presynaptic terminals, so-called because they precede the synaptic cleft, the small gap between two neurons. The blue box indicates the location where synaptic transmission occurs, and this is what we'll be focusing on in this video. Synaptic transmission is the process by which neurotransmitters pass from cell to cell in the nervous system. Neurotransmitters, which are protected in small vesicles, travel down the axon. When the impulse arrives at the presynaptic terminals, it causes the vesicles to disintegrate and the neurotransmitters are released. The neurotransmitters leave the cell surface membrane and enter the synaptic cleft. This is called exocytosis. If successful synaptic transmission occurs, the neurotransmitters should bind to specialized receptors on the postsynaptic cell surface membrane. For example, dopamine, a neurotransmitter implicated in schizophrenia, will only bind to dopamine receptors. Once the neurotransmitters bind to the receptors, the neurotransmitter then diffuses into the postsynaptic terminals, the dendrites of the neuron, and is deposited into a vesicle which forms from the cell surface membrane. This is the process for typical synaptic transmission. However, successful synaptic transmission does not always occur. This can be due to damaged receptors on the cell surface membrane, which might block the neurotransmitter as it attempts to bind to it. If this blocking occurs, then one of two possibilities might occur. First, the neurotransmitter might go back up into the presynaptic terminals, a process known as reuptake. Second, enzymes operating in the synaptic cleft might hydrolyze or break down the neurotransmitters. The neurotransmitter is inactive where the reuptake or enzymatic breakdown occurs and this might lead to depleted levels of neurotransmitters in certain parts of the brain. In summary, the neurotransmitter binds to specialized receptors on the postsynaptic terminals and then diffuses into that cell, then travels on the axon, diffuse out of the presynaptic terminals and again bind to the postsynaptic receptors. The process occurs in the next cell and the next cell and so on. This is synaptic transmission. We are now going to show the animation again. Have a go at narrating it yourself. <laughs> 